Our question is, give the domain and range of the rational functions f of x, which is equal to 1 over x plus 2, and g of x, which is equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. Let's start with f of x. f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2. Now the domain of f is all the possible x's that we can put into the function. That is, all the x's where the function is defined. So let's have a look at where f is undefined. f is undefined when... Well, f is undefined when the denominator is 0. That's how it works for rational functions. So when x plus 2 is equal to 0. That is when x is equal to minus 2. So f will be defined for all real numbers except minus 2. So we need to write that as a set. The domain of f is equal to the set of x in R, so the set of real numbers, such that x is not equal to minus 2. Now it is possible to write this in a different way. It's equal to the set of real numbers without the number minus 2. That's another way of writing it. Alright, let's look at the range now. The range is all the values that my function spits out. So if you draw it as a graph, it's the part of the y-axis that your graph covers. All the possible y's. So we need to find out what possible values we can produce by doing 1 over x plus 2. Let's first investigate what possible values we can get uh, by doing x plus 2, and that should help us. So, x plus 2 can take any real value, since you could stick any x in there and get any other value you wanted. So doing 1 on any real number, you can produce any other real number, except 0 because you can't produce 0 by doing division. You can get as close to 0 as you like, but you can't actually get there. So therefore, 1 on x plus 2 can take any real value except 0. So the range is any real value except 0. So the range of f is the set of y in R such that y is not equal to 0. Which, as I said, we could also write as the set of real numbers without 0. We have to put the curly braces around the 0 because this is set notation. So you can't just stick the number 0. You need to have a set next to that without sign. All right, let's look at g now. g of x is equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. The domain of g is all the x's where g is defined. So again, g is undefined when the denominator is 0. So when x squared plus 1 is 0. Since x squared plus 1 is never 0, so x squared plus 1 is not equal to 0 for any x in R, it must be that the domain of G is just all real numbers. There are no x's where it's undefined, so I can just write that the domain of G is R. Let's look at the range now. The range of g would be found by finding all the y values that g can produce. So let's again have a look at um, what values we can get out of x squared plus 1 and then do 1 over those values to find what values we can get out of g. So for any real x, x squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1, since x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0, being squared. 
So therefore, 1 over x squared plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over 1, which is 1. Don't forget to flip your inequality signs when you do reciprocals. Okay, but also, since x squared plus 1 is positive, we can't produce any negative numbers either. So also, since x squared plus 1 is positive, 1 over x squared plus 1 is positive. So therefore, 0 is less than 1 over x squared plus 1, which is less than or equal to 1. It can't actually be equal to 0 because, as I said, you can't produce 0 by doing division. So our range um, is all of these values from 0 to 1, not including 0, but including 1. So the range of G is the set of Y in R such that 0 is less than Y is less than or equal to 1. So that's one way of writing it. And you could also write this as interval notation. So it's from 0 to 1, not including 0, so we put a round bracket there, and including 1. So let's just check if we've answered the question. We were supposed to give the domain and range of f and g. We have the domain of f and the range of f on the left-hand side, the domain of g and the range of g on the right-hand side. We're finished.